So, welcome to this lecture. Let us just recall what we had done in the previous lecture. Uh, in the previous lecture, we had started looking at various types of functions. We looked at linear functions, we looked at quadratic functions and then we looked at uh, how to define or what motivates one to define what are called exponential functions. So, we gave um, a rough uh, outline of how um, exponential function can be defined. I um, hope uh, you have revised that. Uh, let me just summarize uh, what is exponential function, what are its properties so that we are able to go ahead. So, exponential function uh, is defined for every positive real number a, of course, not equal to 1 and this function is a function from the real numbers taking values, uh, non-negative uh, values and it is denoted as f of x is equal to a x. It is something like a raised to power x with the following properties. One, the domain of this function is all real numbers. So, it is defined for all real numbers. The range is a set of all positive real numbers. So, that means for every positive real number, there exists a um, real number such that x such that a raised to power x is equal to that real number y. So, range means for every positive real number y, there exists a real number x such that a raised to power x is equal to y. So, the domain is the set of all uh, real numbers and the range is the set of all positive real numbers. Uh, it behaves very much like uh, the ordinary uh, powers, uh, the laws of exponents work. Namely, um, for this function a raised power x plus y. So, what is this? This is the image of f of x plus y. So, a raised to power x plus y is same as a raised power x into a raised power y. That means, if you take two real numbers x and y and take the image of x plus y, then the image of x plus y is equal to uh, the product of the images of x and y respectively. And similarly, if you take uh, a real number x, take its image that will be a raised to power x, that will be again a real number, you can take its uh, uh, image again under the function f. So, this will give you a raised power x raised to power y and we uh, claim that this uh, function has the property that this is same as a raised to power this powers multiply uh, essentially x into y. And uh, for every uh, a bigger than 1, so this number a is bigger than 0. So, and we have assumed it is not equal to 1, so it is either bigger than 1 or uh, less than 1. If it is bigger than 1, then it is a increasing function and uh, for less than 1, it is a decreasing function. So, increasing means as you go from left to right, the graph will be uh, going upwards and decreasing means as you go from left to right, the graph will be uh, bending downwards, it will be dropping down. For uh, every positive real number a greater than 1 not equal to 1 of course, uh, f of 0 is equal to 1. That means what? That means there is for this 1 is a positive real number, for this this image pre image is nothing but 0. So, 0 is mapped into 1 for, uh, so that means a raised to power 0 is equal to 1 for every a. And it keeps, so for a bigger than 1, we said it is an increasing function and now it says that limit of x going to infinity f x equal to plus infinity. That means what? That means as you keep on um, increasing f, okay, going as f, um, as x keeps on increasing, it goes to infinity and there is a type of where it should be minus infinity. So, limit x going to minus infinity is equal to 0. So, as you keep on going to the left, the function approaches the value uh, 0 and on the right the function goes on increasing as large as you want. So, here is it should be minus infinity. For a between 0 and 1, uh, the other way around happens namely limit x going to infinity of f of x is 0 if a is less than 1 and it is limit of x going to this is minus infinity again is equal to plus infinity if uh, uh, x goes to infinity uh, minus infinity. 
for a less than 1. So, the behavior of a bigger than and 1 and a less than 1 is uh, almost opposite of uh, each other. Okay. And uh, so, uh, it quite quite clear that the graph of a raised to power x and 1 over a raised to power x uh, are reflections of each other. So, uh, if one tries to plot them, this is what it will look like for the number bigger than 1, this is a blue line when a is uh, uh, here, uh, a is less than 1. So, that is why it is written as 1 over a. So, for a real number uh, bigger than 1, its power is this blue and it is less than 1 non-negative of course, then it is this. So, they are reflections and 0 the both values for both is equal to 1. Um, how this graph is, I have plotted this graph using a, a software, but uh, why does the graph look like this for the exponential function? Uh, one, well, of course, we have said that as you go from left to right, it is increasing and uh, it goes on increasing and it on, keeps on decreasing as you go to the left side. So, why it should look like a nicely rounded kind of uh, graph that requires more properties of functions, uh, calculus properties. We will see it later on uh, that this is actually the graph of both of them. So, this is just to uh, illustrate why graphs are important and what is the relation between uh, of the function a raised power x and 1 over a raised to power x uh, geometrically how they look like. Uh, the function uh, both these functions or any for any a bigger than 0. Uh, this function x going to a raised power x is called the exponential function and this number a is called the base of uh, that function. So, it is the exponential function with base a. Uh, when uh, this base e uh, base is a number e, e is a very special number in the real line which is bigger than 1. It is a number between 2 and uh, 3 and its approximate value is 2.178. It is a irrational number. So, you cannot write exact value of this. Uh, we in the previous lecture, we had seen how to define E using limits of sequences. This is called an Euler number. So, this when this uh, particular base E is taken, then we say that the exponential function has natural base. So, when we say we are considering exponential function with natural base, that means the value of a is taken as e, which is uh, the Euler number. So, uh, for example, um, this is um, we saw in the previous lecture also in terms of this function, the continuous compounded interest with rate of interest r percent in time t is given by. So, p t is the principle that it will grow into in time t, p 0 is the initial investment or the principal amount r is the rate of interest and t is the time. So, e raised power r t the exponential function appears in representing uh, if you want to represent continuous compounded interest uh, at the rate r for time t. Uh, let us look at uh, uh, some observations that for a bigger than 1 we said that a raised power x is a increasing function. So, values increase. So, uh, normally for a bigger than 1, the exponential function a raised power x is called the growth curve and for a less than 1, because it is decreasing, it is called the decay curve. And uh, uh, the functions uh, f x equal to a raised power x and x to uh, just look at the exponential function a raised power x and the function x to the power a a is fixed in both of them. So, it is here is the base being raised to power which is varying here uh, the power is uh, fixed and the base uh, you can think it is varying. Okay. So, uh, what is the difference between these two functions a raised to power x and x raised to power a both are very similar functions as uh, we have seen a raised to power x is increasing function x to the power a also is an increasing function. Okay. But there is a uh, difference between the two, namely the a raised power x grows much faster than x to the power a. Just to uh, give you an illustration, let us look at a equal to 2 and x is equal to um, this number. Okay. 
So, here is values of 2 to the power x and here is a power uh, x square. So, 2 to the power 10 if you compute it is 1024 and 10 to the power 2 is just 100. So, you can already see the difference appearing for the value x is equal to 10. When uh, we take x to be 100, then 2 to the power 100 we can compute it is 12,676, whereas for 100 to the power 2 it is just 10,000. So, all more difference appears. When 2 to the power 1000 you can compute it is the value is this and uh, we have not written the other values. You can see that uh, this value is much bigger than this value. Okay. So, this says that the exponential function grows much faster than the power function. One can pre prove that uh, this growth is faster using higher order calculus. So, we will not be doing that. Okay. The exponential function with base e, the Euler number has uh, special significance. Uh, it is useful in modeling problems involving growth or decay. We have already seen for the compound interest, uh, the exponential function appears that is a growth uh, function. For example, let us look at the population of a tribe say it was 750 in 1947. So, here is an example uh, how this exponential function is used. And um, population is growing at uh, certain rate. So, um, let us say this is the equation which gives the uh, population at time t is 750 into e raised to power 0 0.05 t. It is very much similar to the compounded interest where the rate of interest you can think of is this. So, the growth uh, condition, the growth curve whenever you want to model it is e raised to power some constant times t as time t varies that will give you the growth. Okay. When t is equal to 0, this value is 1 that gives you the population uh, the uh, principal amount or the starting point. So, for in this example if you want to know when you start observing what is the population, so that is t equal to 0, so that is 750 here. So, that is what is also given. As time passes the population is growing and we are saying that this model for the growth is given by this equation. So, the basic thing is, is exponential raised to power a t or alpha t or c t some constant times t where that constant is positive. So, that is a growth model. So, this will keep on increasing at as time t increases. So, this is unlimited growth, it will grow as much uh, as if you do not put any checks it will grow uh, very much. It can grow as large as you want it as time grows. So, you can also use it for modeling total revenue of a firm. For example, let us look at example. Suppose it is expected that the revenue of a firm increases at the rate of 10 percent uh, annually. Okay. So, the revenue of a company or a, or a firm is increasing at 10 percent annually and the initial that is say when you start observing the total revenue is T 0. So, then what is the growth model? So, the total revenue will be T 0. Okay. So, e raise power 10 percent is 10 by 100 into t. So, that is the growth mo model for the uh, revenue of a company it is growing at the rate of 10 percent. So, in case uh, you want to say there is a decline. So, how does that uh, is represent how, how is that represented by exponential function? The only difference comes is it is e raise power minus that rate at which it is decreasing times t. So, if the um, if there is instead of growth uh, increase there is a decrease in the uh, revenue then the model will be total revenue is t 0 e raise power minus 0.1 t and if it is growth it is e raise to power plus 0.1 times t. So, that is the difference uh, the negative sign makes it either increase or decrease. So, the in this uh, earlier model the revenue will keep on increasing right? and uh, in this model the revenue will keep on decreasing. Uh, one can also have a, a in between thing 
whether the revenue uh, or the growth is not as large as you want it, but it is gets limited to something. So, let us uh, look at uh, look at example of that. So, let us say the population of certain bacteria uh, is governed by this function. So, P of t is 10 times 1 minus e raise power minus 0 0.2 t. So, in this scenario, um, what is when t is equal to 0, this value is 1, okay, e raise power 0 is uh, okay, uh, when uh, is uh, so that is 1, so that is 0, so let us say that is 0, okay, right. So, now what is happening? So, let us observe that as t increases, what is happening to 2 point 2 t that is going to increase, okay, but there is a negative sign. So, e raise power that is going to decrease. So, this is going to uh, decrease. This quantity as t increases, this quantity is going to decrease because the e raise to power something that is same as 1 over e raise to power point 2 t. So, 1 over 2 e is exponential of point 2 t as t increases the denominator will increase. So, 1 over that will decrease. So, this is going to decrease and what it is going to decrease to? Essentially, you can uh, uh, feel heuristically that this power uh, becomes uh, 0. So, this is going to become to 10. So, um, one says as t goes to infinity, as t increases, right, e raise power minus 2.2 t goes to 0 and hence p of t the population stabilizes or eventually will reach to 10 as t goes to infinity, right. So, uh, here the population is, uh, okay, there is a limited uh, uh, growth, okay, right. So, uh, it stabilizes eventually to uh, 10, okay, right. So, now uh, let us uh, just uh, uh, point out here. See, as t goes to infinity, we have taken this value as set of it goes to 0, it is coming closer and closer to 0. So, this is a concept of a limit that we shall study soon. So, uh, this is at present it is only uh, intuitively, heuristically that as t goes to infinity, right. So, as t goes to infinity, this term the power is going to go to minus infinity. That means, this is going to 1 over infinity that is eventually sort of going to become smaller and smaller that is going to become 0. So, this is going to become 10. So, this is an intuitive uh, way of saying that uh, the exponential function also can be used for a limited growth or limited decay. So, population here we are saying it will stabilize to 10, right. So, these are the applications of uh, exponential function, it can be used for uh, unlimited growth, unlimited decay or limited growth or limited decay. So, this is a model for the limited. Let us look at uh, one very particular special function, uh, which uh, will not be dealing much at hopefully at uh, in this course, because that requires the concept of functions of two variables. Look at this function, the output of a uh, of any product right depends upon many inputs right when something is being produced it depends on many things land capital labor raw material and so on so let us say for the time being for our uh, consideration the output uh, the production depends upon two things only k and l where k is the capital that is amount uh, invested right and uh, l is the labor that is being employed. So, we want to analyze uh, the production of a certain product vis-a-vis -vis, uh, two variables namely k as the capital and l as the labor. So, this is a um, how much money you invest and how much is the labor you employ that two are independent, they are not related to each other. So, one says k, l and, k and l are independent variables and q is a function of two variables k and l. As a particular uh, special example of uh, this relation q k l, 
is when this q k l is equal to a into capital K right raised to power alpha and the labor L raised to power some beta. So, here are the two exponential functions coming into picture where a alpha and beta are fixed constants. So, this is a model um, which is known as uh, Cobb Douglas model for uh, production of uh, a certain uh, quantity which depends on um, two variables namely capital and the labor. So, uh, our, so, here this is a product of two exponential functions right. So, now suppose the inputs k and l, the k is the capital, l is the labor, uh, both uh, change are changed by the same proportion right. We want to know what will be the effect. So, they are changed by the same proportion say lambda right. So, that what does that mean? So, we change the um, capital by a scalar alpha uh, so that is a constant of proportionality is lambda and uh, for L also is changed by the same constant of proportionality that is uh, lambda. So, we want to know how does the q change. So, let us observe. So, the new q 1 right will be q 1 k 1 L 1 right. If the new uh, change uh, k is changing to k 1 L is changing to L 2. So, if there is q 1 it is this then what will be k 2? k 2 we know that it is proportionately changing. So, k 2 is lambda k 1 and L 2 is lambda L 2 L 1. So, proportionately k 2 by k 1 is lambda and L 2 by L 1 is lambda. So, from some value k 1 L 1 it is changed the capital is changed to k 2 L 2 and the proportionality with the same amount of same proportional amount uh, same proportionality you change. So, what does that mean? So, when you are changed by the same proportion that is reflected in this mathematics that is k 2 is lambda times k 1 and L 2 is lambda times L 1. So, with this what is q 2? This was q 1. So, q 2 is you want to change it to q 2 L 2 right. So, that is q times lambda k 1 lambda uh, L 1 because k 2 is lambda of uh, k 1. So, that means you put the values here ok it is a times lambda k 1 to the power alpha lambda L 1 because what is q? q is a k raised to power alpha. So, we want as k 2. So, this is k 2 that is lambda k 1 to the power alpha lambda of L 1 to the power beta. So, when you simplify lambda of alpha lambda of beta both come out as and by the law of exponents you get lambda to the power alpha plus beta k 1 to the power alpha and L 1 to the power beta. So, that is uh, lambda if you write it outside. So, lambda times alpha plus beta inside is a L 1 a k 1 alpha and L 1 beta that is your q 1. So, q 2 is equal to lambda times alpha plus beta and q 1. So, what does uh, how do you interpret this result? So, this says if k 1 and k if k and l, l are changed proportionately right thus we have the following if alpha plus beta is equal to 1 right then q 1 is equal to q 2 right. In this Cobb Douglas model if it was k times al, uh, alpha l times beta if alpha plus beta is equal to 1. And, and you change proportionality uh, proportionally q and uh, if you change proportionality k and l and if that alpha plus beta relation is 1 then q 1 is equal to q 2. That means, there will not be any change in the production if that condition is met. However, so this means both capital and the labor are changed by a proportion lambda then output q also changes by the uh, same proportion right. So, same ok. Now, let us come back to uh, the exponential function. The exponential function uh, which is uh, defined for a bigger than 1 a not equal to 1 uh, was a function with uh, which was a 1 1 function 
from the domain was the real line and the range was the whole of r plus. So, because it is a 1 1 on 2 function, it has a inverse function and that inverse function uh, is denoted by logarith logarithmic function, log function with the base a. If this a is a, then it is called the log function, a logarithmic function with base a. So, this is a function, this is the inverse of the exponential function, exponential function was from r to r plus. So, the inverse function is from r plus to r and it is defined by the property that log of a, right? this is denoted by log to the base a of x is y if and only if a raised to power a raised to power y is equal to x. So, that is the definition. Uh, one can uh, write down the properties of this log function. Uh, essentially, uh, what we are doing is we are reflecting uh, x against y. So, to do that, so note that the domain is a set of all real uh, all positive real numbers and the range is a set of all uh, real numbers. For a bigger than 1, it is a strictly increasing function. For a less than 1, it is a strictly decreasing function. Right? For uh, exponential of 0 was equal to 1, so log of 1 is equal to 0. We had exponential of x plus y is equal to exponential of x into exponential of y. And so, log function has the property the log of x y x. So, this is not comma, this should be log of the product x y is log x uh, log y. And similarly, if you repeat it, log x to the power n is n times log x. And it uh, goes to uh, if a is bigger than 1, then as x goes to infinity, this goes to infinity. So, it is an increasing function which goes to infinity as x goes to infinity and uh, it for minus 1 it goes to minus infinity or as x goes to 0 as x goes to 0 log of 0 goes to um, uh, for a bigger than 1 to plus 1 and less than 1 it goes to minus infinity. So, these are basically properties of the log function which can be deduced easily from the properties of the exponential function. Uh, in higher calculus one uh, looks at the properties of the inverse function vis a vis of the given function. And its graph uh, is what it this looks like. So, this is a graph of the function. We have, when the base uh, is a natural uh, base, that means a is equal to the uh, Euler number, then this is the graph of the function we have written. Basically, it is the same for all uh, functions. It is a increasing function, it keeps on increasing, goes to infinity as x goes to infinity, and it goes to 0. Um, uh, it goes to minus infinity as x goes to 0. So, it is basically uh, if you draw a line y equal to x and deflect that is a graph of e raised to power x. So, it is a reflection against the line y equal to x. So, just a few remarks that for the base a equal to e, e it is called the log with the natural base otherwise it is called the log for the common uh, logarithm. When a is equal to 10 it is called the uh, log for just log function or the common logarithmic function. This is the formula which allows you to change from base a to the natural log. So, log a to the log x to the base a is log x to the natural base divided by log of that base to the power natural log. So, these are some relations between the exponential function and the log a raised power x is same as exponential of ln of a to the power x and that is same as e raised power ln of a and that is equal to this. So, because they are inverse of each other, so that is. So, one can express uh, x and uh, e raised power x in terms of natural log using these formulas. Normally, the values of in, comp in computation problems, the values of log x, ln x, exponential x are used either from the log tables or from the calculators. So, uh, let me uh, stop here for today's lecture by saying that we have looked at uh, what is exponential function, we have looked at its properties today and we have seen how it is used in various modeling uh, of economic and commerce problems. It can be used as a for a growth model with e raised power um, c t or alpha t, alpha positive gives you the growth model and alpha is negative it gives you the decay model. And then you can also change it a bit 
1 minus uh, e raise power minus alpha t to saying that it stabilizes somewhere, right, some value. So, this is our applications of uh, the exponential function and not only in economics, commerce and management, it appears in many um, modeling problems in applied mathematics also. Thank you.